Good afternoon, YouTube. In my previous videos, I realized there was something off. So in my recording software, I noticed that it just didn't look right. And then when I was going over the older videos, I was wondering how come I didn't sound right either. I came, come to realize that my because I changed computers, got a new setup and everything, my computer defaulted to using the webcam uh, microphone rather than my actual microphone. I'm going to close my window real quick. One moment. Yeah, so <laughs> that's why the audio quality was so ass. Um, I am thinking about changing microphones. Um, I had the Rode NT USB microphone, which if you know which one this is, is it's usually touted as like the best under $100. And it comes with this magnetic pad. And I didn't know that not only does it come off, but the actual rubber underneath it that attaches to the microphone comes off as well. So because I didn't know that, I actually bought a um, Audio-Technica NT2020, which is what I actually wanted. Um, but at the time, I wasn't really sure if I was going to even be consistent with making videos, so I didn't really commit to it. But hey, now I have that I have two mics, I started playing around with the idea of possibly opening up a podcast. I have friends who are trainers as well, and who knows, maybe I'll do something like that in the future. But today is just going to be another quick video. Um, it is finals week and I need to procrastinate. It's really important that I procrastinate at least three hours a day before I study for my one hour. Um, so today I'm going to review the all pro simple beginner routine. So beginner programs, they vary in quality uh, for a variety of reasons. And it usually break comes down to what is the goal of the beginner? For me personally, the goal of the beginner shouldn't be having the most perfect workout plan that's just going to carry them from beginner to advanced or intermediate more realistically. That is not the goal of the beginner. The goal of the beginner is to set the most, let's say, the, for lack of better terms, um, the best baseline for them. So the best base of general fitness. So that means they need to have exercise variety for a couple of reasons. One. Chances are they're not going to be as focused if they don't have a variety of uh, exercises. Now, you might think that doesn't really make any sense. But if you train with beginners long enough, you'll see that unless they're being given something kind of like exciting or stimulatory mentally, rather than just like being being told, put your head down, put your nose to the grindstone and just work. That's not going to work out all that great for them. They're going to develop a level of either resentment or apathy towards the gym. And that is not the goal of a beginner. The goal of a beginner should be being as consistent as possible, falling in love with the gym, falling in love with the process. Now, we oftentimes we fail at that. Reason being is because we tell beginners the only thing you should do is get strong. And yes, training for strength, training for size, there is an overlap between them. But generally speaking, whenever we talk to a beginner as a community, we kind of just give them strength training workouts, starting strength, um, strong lifts. These are programs that are very commonly run by beginners because the common pervading theory is that, oh, if you just get stronger, you get bigger. And there's truth to that, but it's not the whole truth. And if it was the whole truth, then why is it that many top level lifters train with kind of a power builder mentality or how come the and of course how come the best looking lifters train like bodybuilders because there's value in that way of training so novice systems and they need to make sure that they're not just arbitrarily setting a path of oh if you're strong your base is good and that's all you need the base of a novice is built on consistency and and proficiency in a variety of different movements so it's the mastery of movement patterns it's mastery of the wide spectrum of movements that all fit together if you can if you're good at push-ups you're going to be better at dumbbell benching if you're going to be better at dumbbell benching it's going to make it easier to learn how to bench press with a barbell a lot easier and it doesn't really matter what kind of squat you do back squat front squat goblet squat doesn't fucking matter when you learn how to do a hip hinge romanian deadlifts stick led stiff leg deadlifts the actual goddamn deadlift those are all vital key elements and we can't neglect them for the novice because what's going to happen? We tell them to do only five exercises, go into an uh, intermediate program and suddenly they have to learn um, 12 exercises. They could have just been, they're going to suck for like quite a while because they're beginners, you know, might as well, well, during that time, you might as well try to learn as much as you can and 
really get good at the understanding movement patterns and not specific movements. So that's kind of a quick, uh, I don't know, rant. But today we're going to be reviewing the All Pro Simple Beginner Routine. Now, I glanced over it, but I don't actually remember too much other than its basic model of progression. Um, but let's get into it. So this is a um, five times a week program. Or no, this program runs in five week cycles and it's three times per week. Progression occurs through weekly increases in reps. I like that. Primary movements are squat, bench press, bent row, overhead press, stiff leg deadlift, up leg row, and calf raises. I like this as well. I'm questioning why it was the why the stiff leg deadlift was chosen. Usually, when it comes to a bodybuilding program, me personally, I would choose a Romanian deadlift. Reason being is that the stiff legged deadlift it it's a safe exercise. Don't get me wrong, but let's say the risk of it going wrong for a novice and this is a beginner program is a lot higher. Like generally speaking, the people who are really good with stiff leg deadlift they know how to deadlift already. But um, Stiff leg deadlifting for a beginner, I think it runs the risk of teaching them bad form. And a Romanian deadlift, I think, curbs that quite nicely. So let's, this is, oh shoot, damn. Damn, all right. Oh, hey look, they addressed my question. So I guess it's gonna be a long video. Um, so how many sets am I doing exactly? You are doing two working sets for each exercise. I think this is very appropriate. I think for novices and beginners, I tend, I lean, well, I mean, generally speaking, I actually lean toward the side of lower volume. Um, I prefer lower volume, but higher quality volume. Now for novices, two working sets is more than enough. I've, after training um, multiple novices who literally for all their life, they've never touched a weight, when during their first couple months of training, two sets a week, or two sets of session on certain exercises was more than enough for them to tell me that they were sore for at least two days. So it's not super necessary for them to train three sets of 10 the way um, they would later on. And it's definitely not necessary for them to do a five by five or a three by five just because they're a novice and that's what they should be doing. So you are doing two working sets for each exercise and you are doing two warm-up sets for the first three exercises only, squats, bench press, bent rows. The remaining four exercises do not require warm-ups. So that means you're doing seven exercises a day. Um, it seems kind of excessive, but given that it's not the most frequent program, I, they, they kind of get a pass. But generally speaking, when it comes to novice programs and when I program for novices, I really go in there with the mindset of get in, get out. Like, like practice your practice the lift try to try to progress in the amount of reps you do the quality of reps you do and maybe the amount of weight that you're lifting and then do some accessories take it fairly close to failure and then get out like they don't need to be in there for super long their fitness for one their fitness probably wouldn't allow it and then also like they're very intimidated on enough already like they they're so self-conscious about what they're doing they're trying to teach their body how to do something all while thinking to themselves like, oh, people are watching me. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. When really like no one's really caring. Like they're just thinking like, oh my God, this fucking guy's like using the squat rack right now and I want to use it. They're not caring about your form all that much. There's a select few who do, but, cause, but they're uh, a bit more kind about it. So my big issue with the fact that it's basically all compound movements for each session is the fact that because it's all compound movements and you're only doing two warm up sets for your for the three exercises only, I understand why. So the reason, so in my programs, my, I only do a warm up set for the first one because like for example, um, on deadlift day, I pyramid up to my deadlift weight, I pyramid up to it, that's using warm up sets. And then I do my working sets for the main strength work and then I do a deadlift variation. Because it's still a hip hinge, I don't need to warm up. It's not a new movement pattern. Then I go into a knee flexion exercise. I will need to warm up. It's a completely new uh, movement pattern to the day. And that means I actually need to take the time to warm up that movement pattern and the muscles associated with it. Now, now obviously when you deadlift, you're using similar muscles that are going to be used in the squat, namely your glutes, uh, hip flexors, and hamstrings. They are used to an extent in the squat, but they're not the main movers. So when you are using a new movement pattern, you need to warm up for it. Here, from what I can tell, like from what I can see, it, this seems to be the main workout. Um, so that means like you repeat this multiple times throughout the week. 
And what I can tell is that you're doing a knee flexion followed by a horizontal press followed by a horizontal pull and you warm up for these three movements. Then you do an overhead press without warming up. I don't really like this, namely because and I can I can see the argument for and against it in both ways because for example, if they're a novice, their overhead press probably isn't that um, strong. So the absolute the absolute and objective amount of weight that they're lifting on this movement isn't going to be that high, so not the biggest deal, right? However, what I will say is that they should still at least do one working or one warm up set. Like for one warm up sets, generally speaking, I don't think you should rest between your warm up sets. If it's a war if it's a true warm up, if it's truly for the purpose of just priming the movement pattern, getting used to the movement, you don't need to rest between it. I don't rest between my warm ups. Like for example, with the deadlift example. Like I do 10 uh, remaining delves with an empty bar, slap on some 45s, do two reps, 25s, two reps. Like I, I warm up pretty minimally with my deadlifts. I, I think I need, I need to add a bit more volume to my deadlift warm up, which is, uh, which is something I'm experimenting with. But generally speaking, like I don't rest between warm ups. I, the, the rest between a warm up set is me adding more weight. And that's not me being a badass or me being strong. It's just that's how good warming up should be like. If it's truly a genuine warm-up, there is not the need to take rest. So here, just do the empty bar. Is it really that big of a deal to do to like avoid doing the empty bar? Just do the empty bar, get the get some good quality reps in, and then go into your working set. Stiff leg deadlifts. Same so and curls, calf raises. I mean, two sets is more than enough on accessories for novices, that's for sure. I usually throw throw them in there because like accessories themselves, I do believe that they should be included in every novice program. But that being said, they should never take precedence over anything else within the program. Will I gain mass on this routine? Despite what you may think, gaining muscle is not just about lifting weights. The weight training is just the catalyst, which will create necessary conditions to build muscle. Eat in a calorie surplus. So yes, being in a hypercaloric um, state makes it easier to um build more muscle because there's more energy within your body to use but let's say you're fat as hell i mean you don't need to be in a calor calorie surplus because your body is naturally in a surplus already calories are a unit of energy so fat is stored energy if you're obese as fuck and you're going to be running this program or my apologies if you're obese or if you're fat or if you have more body fat than you do anything else in your body so you're not skinny fat you're just fat then you have the cal caloric needs built into your body to handle this. So the caloric surplus is not the most important thing. I think when it comes to nutrition, it's very much overblown. Just try to maintain your weight and the weight will kind of take care of itself if uh, you do that. Let's see, I've never lifted before and completely out of shape. Is this appropriate for me? Exactly with you in mind, it's perfect for you. That's kind of a reach. The reason being is because look, um you're doing the basic compound movement great but you're doing it for every single exercise and every single day that the compound movements are great because while they activate the most amount of muscles and they um allow you to lift the most amount of weights they also have the highest learning curve of any exercise any novice can walk up to a machine and the machine will only let them move in one specific way and they'll be fine and it will stimulate growth because hypertrophy is not exercise specific meaning you can build muscle on a machine you can build muscle on a dumbbell doesn't really matter in that sense so my biggest issue here is the fact that novices are they're not training because they need to progress they're training because they need to practice and then progress their form needs to improve first and the progression that should be implemented early into the workout program should be focused on getting better practice. So volumizing, I think, is a great approach for novices because it allows them to get more touches on the bar. Um, but to say that this is made with them exactly in mind, it's perfect for them, no. There's no such thing as a pre-made program that's perfect for you. That doesn't mean you need to hire a coach or nothing, even though I would appreciate it if you would hire me. All this means is you try the program, you run it for a couple weeks as it's written, and slowly make modifications until it's perfect for you. Learn how to program for yourself or ask someone to teach you how to program for yourself.
I have tested my tenor max for each exercise. I have already completed two full weeks of the first cycle and the weight seemed too low for me. I feel like I could lift much more. Should I increase the weight? Avoid increasing weight mid-cycle and only doing... I, I agree with this. Like, teach um, novices to not progress in weights too quickly. Like, I prefer to build in the work capacity in a certain rep and a, with a certain weight. And it might seem light. It might seem like you can do more. And the thing is, for main strength work, the way I'd like to think about it is that for half of my workout session, I'm working like uh, Ivan Drago. Now, if he was natural, of course, because like to make him even more of a bad guy in the film, they had to give him steroids. But for the first half of my training session, I'm training very scientifically. I'm being, I'm training very precisely. But then on the supplemental work, on the accessories, I train like Rocky, where I just go all out. I just um, kill myself over that exercise, and then I go home. Reason being, strength is very nuanced, and the best knowledge that we have on strength is that training super close to failure isn't uh, for strength is not um as necessary as you might think you can watch videos of pavel satsulin you can watch like look at the advices of let's say alexander bromley of or shako like they truly advocate sub maximal training for strength and for good reason it works so if it feels too easy it should make other adjustments before you just add weight rest less um really improve your form maybe add a couple reps like do something that and that's something that's involved included in this program for when i um remember looking at it so that's all things that you can include just instead of just adding weight there's no tricep exercise in this routine what gives you Triceps are being quit hide hard in bench presses and overhead press. Um, as a beginner, you don't need more than that. That's kind of disingenuous to say, in my opinion. Do not add any extra tricep works or you're almost guaranteed to fail on the bench press or overhead press for both. For one, the tricep is involved in the movement. I can't deny that. However, it doesn't hit the long head of the tricep, which is going to really contribute to the overall size and look of your tricep. So some type of tricep extension should be included i mean there's three days in the program how hard would it be to throw in a different arm arm variation on different days i like doing push-ups pull-ups push-ups and standing on my head can i add so don't add anything see like this is something i have an issue with there should never be a program that asks you to not change anything about it the value of a program the value of a system is the evolution of that program now obviously this m means like for example let's say you um are you want to do 531 you can make changes in let's say the exercise selection in this things such as that however you still need to follow that basic progression pattern of 531 or you're no longer doing 531 but that's just the progression pattern but usually it's the progression pattern that makes the system when it comes to anything else though, you should have the freedom to make changes. If, for example, you wanna run this program, but you don't have all the pieces of equipment, but you can do something else, just do something else. Um, no regular deadlifts. Um, neither squats nor deadlifts address the posterior chain, what? Okay. Um, regular deadlifts do address the posterior chain. Stiff-legged deadlifts, this problem is solved and the balance is introduced. Regular squats and deadlifts already provide that balance. Let's see, regular deadlifts are two exercises that are taxing to the central nervous system as a beginner. If you did both of these in the exact same routine, what? Okay, so I guess every single other um, novice program is wrong for including deadlifts. Regular deadlifts, of all things. So for one, it's, it's kind of like conflating a mixed point where it's like, yes, if you do heavy squats and heavy deadlifts in the same session, it's bad. But if you do them in the same program, it's more than doable. It's more than fine, and it's and it works very well. So, um, whoever wrote this Q and A might want to uh, rethink that, especially since they misspelled stiff. I mean, I'm I'm not best at spelling either, but you can only do one thing: either have a wrong opinion or spell that wrong opinion badly. Or so you can't do both. You have to choose one. Um, what type of extra cardio should I do? Don't overdo your cardio on this routine um two 30 minute jogging sessions just go on walks man like walk 
and then when walking becomes too um, long and easy, you can cut down the time by then going to jogging. Ab exercises. Um, I'll have to talk about that in another video because I don't want to. This video is already going on pretty long. Uh, tons of them online. X. As a general rule, no. <laughs> See, like, why? Why is it so important that that exercise is the holy grail of your um, fitness as a novice? There's before the actual exercise, there's the movement pattern. As long as they're doing some type of hip hinge, some type of horizontal press, if like, for example, they want to get better at a weighted dip over the bench press, they can overload a weighted dip close to as much, honestly, um, because you're taking your body weight into the mix. And then let's say you can do a four plate um, weighted dip. Like you're going to tell me your upper body's weak and not strong. Hell no. So better okay why, you know, can I use dumbbells instead of barbell? So apparently it's okay to sh switch out barbells and dumbbells, but um, that's basically doing a whole nother exercise. Uh, so this Q&A is quite long. How do I know if I'm a beginner or not? Can squat twice his body weight. What if he's uh, 200 pounds? That means he's going to be a beginner until he can squat 400 pounds. Um, one and a half times his body weight for one repetition. <laughs> so I guess yeah, unless you're a beginner, unless you can squat 400 pounds, that's their standard for beginner. Good job. Strength standards are horrible ways to measure the beginner stage, mainly because, uh, and if they are used, like strength standards are used to define decide if you're a beginner or not. Um, it's a. Uh, they should be kind of lowballed. Reason being is strength is more than just the amount of time you lift. It's about how you lift, it's about your leverages, it's about your genetics, it's about your neuromuscular efficiency. And for example, think about this. Kevin Durant can't bench press more than like 185, but he's a pro level athlete. Now obviously his sport is, doesn't require him to be the best bench presser in the world, but it's usually a measure of upper body strength for athletes of his caliber. Um, but he can't do it. Why? Not because he's weak or anything like that, because He's clearly a very powerful player on the court. It's more so that he has long ass fucking arms. He has to, the, the way the bar has to travel for him is exponentially longer than most people ever will be. So string standards, not that great. The beginner phase really just depends on, in my opinion, two things. Do you know how to lift and does straight up linear periodization not work for you anymore? If that's the case, then you're no longer a beginner. If you can just reliably add weight, add reps, add sets week to week to week without having to take a step back fairly frequently, so meaning for some novices, if they run like starring strength or strong lifts, they just keep adding weight each week for about like maybe half a year or something like that. Um, I'm not saying you're no longer a beginner after half a year or anything like that, but linear, straight up linear periodization will stop, to wor will stop working fairly quickly. And then also, their proficiency with certain exercises will increase the longer they train. That is the sign of a novice or a beginner. I mean, a, like that is the sign of a beginner. So not, can you squat 400 pounds? Like Jesus fucking Christ, your bench press should be close to 300 pounds. Are you kidding me, dude? Like, I mean, this is what I believed in. Like, this is what I taught myself when I was getting into lifting. Like I didn't consider myself an intermediate lifter until I could deadlift over 500 until my bench was over 300. And my squat unfortunately never hit 400 cause you know, I was um, involved in a, because I was in the military, I had to run a lot. And then also I injured my knees like pretty bad. So my knees, ankles and hips. So my squat has always been the trouble issue, trouble area for me, but no. This is a horrible metric to decide if you're a beginner or not. Linear periodization doesn't work for you and you know how to lift. You're not a beginner anymore. Let's get into the actual program before I actually just like throw my monitor at a wall. I don't know why I'm <laughs> getting upset at this. I guess it's the, uh, I was going to make a roid rage joke, but I don't want to give people that satisfaction of thinking I'm actually on steroids. I'm too fat to be on steroids. All right. So, I mean, look. Just looking at this program, I can already see that he includes like warm up sets for exercises that don't even need them. So I think he needs to work on his Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets spreadsheet skills. Um, so heavy, medium, light. I think that's a great setup. Um, but so he bases it off of, I believe, a 10 rep max. So 
you're doing 100% of your 10 rep max for eight reps. That's good. That's the maximal training. Then you do, um, then you do less weight next time, but you keep the reps the same. Then you keep this, then you do less reps next time. And you keep the same weight and that's fair. Um, cause then week two, you're going to add reps. So very bare bones, very basic cookie cutter. And I want to, I wish there's more I could say about this program other than the fact that I do like how it's a volumizing approach. I do like that. I do like the exercise selection, but I don't like how every single day is the exact same thing. And it's done for all the wrong reasons, in my opinion. Novices, like, they're going to burn out pretty quickly on this, in my opinion. And they're going to kind of get pigeonholed into only knowing how to do one thing. And I think that is not the best for them. Just straight up. Like, I gl I'm glad that they include um, accessories for the novice lifter. I mean, wasn't bicep curls involved in here somewhere? Like, where'd that go? Uh, I don't know, but novices should do be doing um, accessories. Like, I do 100% agree with that. And all of these exercises are exercises that novices should do, but it should be spread out in a much different way. For example, um, it's fine if a novice only does a certain movement, like let's say for the deadlift, like once every five days. It's totally fine. They, but they should be using other exercises in the meantime that stimulate the same movement pattern. So some, for example, for my novices, I'll have them do deadlifts, but then on on a specific day, but then other days I'll have them do the mornings or Romanian duds just to get that practice of the hip hinge without having to do an exercise that is as taxing as a deadlift. I think that would have been a much more appropriate implementation of the idea that you don't want to overtax yourself. Since he's using a 10 rep max, it's kind of, uh, that's that kind of threw me off about have, going 100%, 90%, light, and then 80%. But I do like a heavy, medium, light setup. When it comes to a three day, program or anything that like starts out as a three-day program heavy medium light is a fairly good setup a program that i made for one of my clients is a heavy medium light setup but he can work out anywhere between three to six days a week and that's because there's three heavy days three medium days and three light days and you just cycle through each of them because he's more of a hypertrophy focused athlete um there the, there's always going to be the movement pattern but there's but the specific exercise isn't always going to be in there. And it's kind of an experiment, experimental um, program for him. And he's liking it a lot. He's actually um, lost a fair amount of weight and he's just noticing better muscle definition. So it's working for him. So heavy, medium, light is a great setup. But for a novice, only having them do this, like, for example, squat. For a heavy day, like, yeah, for the heavy day, do all this, right? Then for the medium day, not only should you do the squat with less weight for the same reps why not do a pause squat a box squat a pin squat a variation of the squat that gives them more tools in their toolbox and teaches them more skills i think that would have been a much better implementation of that instead of doing a bench press like so i'm assuming this is barbell bench press this can be close grip bench press this can be incline bench press and then over here we have a light day dumbbell bench press like floor press, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Like on the heavy day, do overhead press, do then maybe do like dumbbell overhead press and then, or on the light day and then on the medium day, maybe do a seated overhead press because um, some that can give you a little bit of help. So when you think about heavy, medium, light, don't only think about it in the load, think about it also in terms of what is the hardest variation of a movement pattern the hardest version of the bench or the variation of the bench that you can overload the most with the longest range of motion is just the standard bench press. But then you do like a medium one where it's kind of like the incline bench where it's very close in load, very close in technique. The potential for overload is just as, just as high. And then on a light day, you do a dumbbell. So you have a light variation, a medium variation, and a heavy variation. Now the novice has the skills and proficiency in multiple exercises that belong to a single movement pattern and that is significantly better than what this currently offers so i like that this is a volumizing approach and i like the exercise selection but it's just too close to um 
exercise selection and also this is a bodybuilder routine why is specificity so high in specific movements when hypertrophy itself is not exercise specific you want to choose exercises that allow you to overload the most and activate the most amount of muscle get the most bang for your buck but with that being said there's a lot of exercises that fit that mold why is it so strict on exercises when you can do a wide variety of exercises that will accomplish that goal so this program i'm going to give a D, because most cookie cutter programs are going to be like that. Even programs that I'm going to put out are going to have those same holes and everything like that. Because, and I'm always going to include that in, like, let's say, description of my programs. Reason being, I'm making this. It's kind of like, um, it's, if I'm making a personalized program, I'm kind of like an archer with a bone arrow. It's easier for me to hit the target. But let's say I'm just shooting a shotgun into the wind, like, and hoping that I hit as many targets as possible then my accuracy is going to be off because of that fact. But the chance of me hitting more targets is a lot higher because my spread is wider. Um, so that's going to be an issue of any program that is pre-made. Run it, run it how it's written. Like, run it how it's written for maybe about like a month. Write down over that month what you like, what you don't like. And then do some research as far as like modifications that make sense and that you can make implement them run it for a month change these variables one at a time by the way don't change like don't like change two variables at the same time um just change one variable at a time and refine the program until that program is finally yours that's how you should that's how you should be approaching any of these programs that you find on a website like lift vault lift vault is a great resource but for a program to say only do it this way only do these exercises i think is horrible and also when the way the program is written in, in itself there's good about it, but I would say that it, there's more bad about it or the bad or the weaknesses of the program are def, definitely outweigh the strengths of it. So this program is a D. That's it for this video. It ended up being a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but regular content should be coming back on the channel. Um, if I have time today, I'll do a learned lifter. Uh, and yeah, besides that, Happy Sunday. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Peace.